Okay, so we're right here with uh, all, which is, uh, I don't remember if you were one of the first, but I remember in uh, the first time I get into chat fuel community, uh, there was like 10 people in the Facebook group. They just <laughs> shut down the, um, the, uh, the web version of the community to answer questions. Yeah. So uh, we've been in the community uh, since uh, almost six years. It feels like it was like two years from now because... Um, the bot and the artificial intelligence is, is uh, going so fast. So thanks first to allowing me to uh, uh, talk to you. And today we're going to just uh, explore your uh, wonderful dialogue flow client, which I think has a lot of potential for, for all people and beginners that don't have any necessarily uh, experience with coding. So thanks for you for being there. And uh, we're going to explore that, uh, that wonderful Dialogflow client, which I think has a lot of potential. I'm writing an article for the, the best uh, plugins there out there in the market to help people either with ChatFuel and Dialogflow, because people know me for Dialogflow, but I also use ChatFuel as you do. So thanks for being there, all. And uh, mm -hmm. maybe you can uh, introduce yourself, uh, what you're doing, and uh, you know your experience, and what you do right now with uh, chat fuel and uh, many chat and everything sure sure um, well basically um, I I'm originally a mechanical engineer um, and I've got about 20 years worth of or 18 19 years of experience in, in programming just all kinds of all kinds of platforms everything from uh, like old visual basic I still have clients that I support that use ASP 2 some classic ASP which is awesome <laughs> Um, but you know, but I, I've, I've kind of gone into the PHP, my SQL and WordPress, uh, arena. And then, um, you know, just in the last, I'd say year, year and a half, you know, of course the chat bots have blown up and I really, really have enjoyed the bots because it's, um, uh, it's, it's definitely taking over like the phone app space and, you know, everybody's using messenger cause it's installed on their phones most of the time. And, you know, it, it's better than downloading an app and, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely the way people talk. So, um, you know, there's, there's, we're still in the, the brand new, uh, you know, it, it's still a brand new market. I mean, there's so much that can be done with it and, uh, adding, adding in dialogue flow, uh, and, and the PHP backend or JSON APIs and all that with chat fuel just adds so much more power to a chat bot than just, you know, giving somebody a lead magnet or, or getting their email and sending it to Zapier. So, you know, it's just, it's kind of, I've been wanting to use the, uh, the, you know, use dialog flow for our real estate bots uh, because, you know, people don't always answer the way you want them to. And so you don't want to break your bot. You don't want to have a bad experience and you definitely, it's all about lead generation. So if you can talk to the people the way they, they want to talk to the bot, then uh, you're definitely going to have a lot, a lot better uh, user experience and less friction in, in order to get that lead. So that's kind of why I wanted to use dialog flow. Um, I've, I've looked at the run kits and, you know, all the different setups and all that and, and using a Node.js server. And I'm a PHP guy, so, you know, I, I decided I would just go ahead and create one. And I like self-hosting it because I can run it on my own system, process the data if I want to on the back end. I can always expand it if I need to, whereas, you know, if, if I had to shoot it off to a third-party service, I don't know what's going to go on with it. You know, I don't know if the service is going to go down or, you know, yeah. if, throttle the, the calls or something like that. So well, that's why fact, I created the client. In fact, PHP, uh, even Facebook is coded in PHP. PHP is like, if we'd make a reference with the Lord of the Ring is like the, the one ring because it's the safest. Well, Python is pretty much, uh, it, it's the closest one to PHP, but yeah. you know, it's the safest uh, language and the most, well, versatile one. Yeah. And about that, uh, you saying that it's a new market well, uh, I've read uh, a couple of months ago that uh, the AI market within the next two years will be representing $1.2 billion worth of, uh, you know, for, for the people which are really early in this race. Oh, I sure. yeah. actually refer uh, the AI uh, right now like the gold rush. So everyone, the agencies, everyone that are uh, social media marketer that getting more interested by it. If you do get interested right now, this is the right timing. <clears throat> in fact, I, I spoke to several people who were too early in this game a year ago, and they started getting out of it. But it's just a matter of timing. I think right now it's the good timing to get into business. Oh, yeah. Some people were like super early. So right now is a good timing for it. So 
maybe you can show us, uh, you made a, um, a great uh, PDF uh, on how to uh, set up your client, and then maybe we can <coughs> step on with, uh, I saw that you use Sublime, but for the people out there, if you don't know um, Sublime, uh, it's just a, uh, basically it's just like a, a notepad, an evolved notepad, so you mm -hmm. can use Notepad or Notepad++ to access uh, you know this uh, file and within the file we're going to show you how to set up the client mm -hmm. but first you can set up uh, you can check up uh, maybe uh, in one minute your uh, your PDF so there's going to be a few steps in order to implement the client so we can yeah. check each of them maybe in a summary and then we can make the setup and then after that when people are going to watch the video they're going to have questions we're gonna upload that um, video on YouTube so they can answer on YouTube if they have questions. And in Dialogflow community, we're gonna publish this. And it's gonna be part of an article which I'm writing, which is gonna be called the best uh, chatbot plugins. Uh, there's gonna be four or five of these plugins that I hope you guys can use easily and can make your journey through either ChatFuel, ManyChat, or Dialogflow, or both ChatFuel and Dialogflow. Uh, and um, can make you life easier because I think right now we we experience a step in which we're sort of like, like WordPress when the first plugins begin and that people were interested in getting uh, to make website. So uh, bots are part of the web 2.0 with uh, the blockchain and the internet of things. So now the market is opening up to making plugins so that more people can benefit and, and go into that business because up to now it was like purely either developer or a uh, digital marketer but I think that other people will get interest in fact uh, we talked to someone yesterday which like from the legal um, yeah. from a legal perspective were, were, was getting interested in, into getting into bot business so we're opening up to other people and I think it's, it, it's exciting to see people which uh, up to now was like 95% were either developers or digital marketers. And then we're, we're seeing like other people from other markets getting interested in. So I'll, I'm going to let you uh, show this setup and how to use it. And then sure. we can uh, change the screen and uh, maybe cast your screen so that we're going to do uh, and I can ask a few questions, whatever I think that the, the, the average Joe would, would get lost. <laughs> sure. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, let me, uh, let me share my screen. I'll, um, let's see, I'll, I'll just share the whole monitor. Actually, you know what, yeah. let, me share, let me share the PDF first and I will show you that. And so basically, uh, what, what I did w with this client, what I wanted to do is, um, I, I, uh, wanted to, to have it available in the community and I, you know, I, and I've released a bunch of plugins for free and everything. But what I wanted to do with this client real quick is, is actually have it so that it, it benefited more people if, if somebody wants to purchase it. So I'm actually, I'm selling it as donation wear and um, the, the, the charity that I, that I want the, oh, are you there, Carl? Yeah. Uh, we're oh, gonna, sorry. We need to restart that portion where you first start and say uh, uh, the PDF. So, yeah. Uh, stop so, the recording, restart it, and just go ahead uh, and hope, hopefully we won't have any uh, more interruptions. Okay. Yeah, sure. Um, so basically what, what we're doing with, with this, with this uh, client is that I'm actually uh, selling it as donation wear. So uh, the charity that, that I wanted to work with is one that um, I'm, I'm kind of close to because I know, I know several people that are working with it. Um, and it's called the Exodus Road. And what they do is they actually uh, they actually fight uh, uh, human trafficking. And you know, in all these uh, these different countries, the U.S. and all around the world, uh, there there are people you know selling and buying women and children and and men for you know for all kinds of things like slavery and and, and the sex trades and things like that. And I know people who have actually. Uh, uh, have gone over to Southeast Asia and they work undercover with with the uh, the Thai FBI and and, and different uh, organizations to actually f combat this and they need all the help they can get and they, they've saved you know uh, uh, thousands of people or hundreds of, and of people uh, I think it's close to a thousand people so far where they they go in and they'll 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 find the people they'll rescue them they'll perform raids they'll prosecute the people that are that are committing these crimes and so they need help and so um, my what what I decided to do is actually sell the client so if somebody does, donates basically thirty five dollars 
um, I, you get you get the client, you get uh, you know you get the documents and everything like that, and you get support if you have questions. So um, you know, I think it's a, a good charity to work with. Anyway, um, this is and this is the documentation. So I've actually prepared for the uh, for the the dialogue flow client an entire eleven page manual. Um, it basically has uh, the beginnings, kind of a, a quick explanation of, of the charity, et cetera. And we also have the list of, of uh, resources. So, you know, dialogue flow, of course, chat fuel, um, and some other things, um, you know, how to edit the PHP file with it, with the, some preferred text editors. Um, we also have down here, of course, uh, you know, links to your, your tutorials, Carl, and the, uh, the uh, dialogue flow community and some other tutorials as well so that people can learn how to use dialogue flow with chat fuel. And basically what this does is it walks you through as simple as it can be very step by step. I mean, there's, there's literally five steps to uh, getting this up and running and you can have it running uh, with your chat fuel bot in probably under 10 minutes if wow. you go through this. So, and it's, it's, I made it so that it's extremely simple for people. Even if you don't even have any PHP experience, you don't need to know. All you need to know is how to edit one setting. So that's, that's really about it. And actually I've got the, the current version of the, of the uh, plugin doesn't even require you to even edit any settings. You could upload and go and you're, and you're up and running. So, um, and if you know a little bit of chat fuel, you're, you're ready to go. So um, that's basically uh, the manual. You know, like I said, it's 11 pages. I walk you through it. Um, you know, and of course, happy to uh, uh, support it in the dialogue flow group. And then, you know, of course, by private message as well. So I've had people ask me questions and I've made some little updates to it. For, you know, as, as people have questions, I've, I've updated the software. So um, that's, that's, the, that's it in a nutshell. So did you want to go through uh, the quick setup? Yeah, yeah, and, and just one thing is that there's I I each week each day or you know I get question about you know coding and the and you know most languages for coding are pretty similar and a good portion of the coding is if you know English then you're gonna know at least like fifty percent of the coding because there is some stuff that you get to learn from one language to another but at the end of the day it's 50% of the job is, you know, English, then you're going to know like 50% of it. So don't be scared to start and do a little coding. Um, yeah. Some, some developer uh, did, I compare that your, your client to someone who has a uh, WordPress site, no experience in coding, but learn some snippet of code with CSS mm -hmm. just to edit like the, you know, the style or everything. So with this client, I think that if you, if you once built a WordPress site and you add some plugins and you read the material to make this plugin work and write a couple two line of codes, you're going to be fine with, you know, setting this up. And once it's going to be set up, it's going to open you uh, more, uh, you know, it's going to make the limitation to your bot because each platform, uh, whether it's style of flow, chat fuel, many chat as is pros and is con, and none of them is complete. So by using a little bit of, you know, plugins, you're going to make your bot experience much more interactive for your clients and much more uh, intuitive for your clients because Dialogflow is a great for natural language processing, which is basically just understanding what a human being is typing in English or, or any other uh, languages. But Dialogflow is not an app. It's not like an Android uh when you're building an app on Android, we are going to code everything. Well, Dialogflow's job is mainly just to understand what the user is saying. And then uh, we need to relate either with a webhook, a web client on Heroku. Uh, but there's, there's, it's not doing everything. So there's a lot of people thinking that Dialogflow is doing everything, but it's not the case. The job of Dialogflow mainly is to interpret what you're saying and then we need to have something else that take that data and then parse it and return it back to the user. So maybe we can make the quick setup sure, uh, yeah. and show in maybe under ten minutes how we're we can. Uh, yeah, it. I think we can. I think we can definitely do that. We can uh, start the clock or something. And but uh, yeah, let me let me share the screen again and yep. we'll uh, 
we'll start with this. So the first step you want to do is if you don't have a Dialogflow account, if you have a Gmail account, you can pretty much get a Dialogflow account. That's because uh, Google owns it. So um, if you if you sign up, you can basically sign up there uh, with Dialogflow. And since I'm already uh, a user, it just goes right to my console. So um, when you go to Dialogflow, you can hit sign up or you can hit the sign in. So uh, the first thing, um, and, and you can probably break in here whenever, Carl, because you, you know more Dialogflow than I do. Um, you basically need to create uh, what is called an agent. And that is basically um, the a collection of, well, I guess a collection of intents but an agent is basically what is going to process the input for a particular bot. So if you have a hotel bot or a gym bot, you would probably have two separate agents because they're going to take two different types of input from users. Different, Basically, an agent is kind of like a niche. So if you're a restaurant or a hotel or something like that, then you might want to create an agent for each kind of bot. You don't need – now, if you have multiple hotel bots, you would probably all use the same agent. Is that pretty good? Yeah, in fact, uh, that's that's perfectly how uh, I, I see it. If there's if you have like um, three different hotels uh, from the same uh, <coughs> from the same chain, let's say Marriott, you'd probably use the same agent. Mm -hmm. The only difference is if you were from a, another, uh, let's say, for the restaurant business, if you have a, a restaurant business who do delivery and another one who doesn't do delivery. Probably that 95% of your agent is going to be the same. The only difference is going to be for the delivery one. And if uh, your menu is different, then probably the, the, the agent is going to be uh, a bit different. But like 90% of it will have the same information in regard to uh, how, uh, you, you know. But if you have a different type of hotel or a different chain with different services, then 90% of the agent probably going to be the same. But there's going to be a small portion. We can explain that with the restaurant use uh, use case because uh, we've seen in the is use the uh, restaurant user case because it's really good. It's complex. Most people can relate to that. So in dialogue flow with the restaurant user case, you could have a uh, pizzeria or you could have like an Italian restaurant, which two share pretty much 90% of all the content that an agent would have, like such a they both could have pizza. They both could have like uh, either uh, eating at the restaurant or delivery, but one of the two could not offer delivery. So it would make probably the agent to be pretty similar, but there would be a portion of it which would be different. But we won't cover that for the sake of this video. And we, if you have other questions about you know, how to set up your dialogue flow agent within uh, a certain type of business, then you can always on uh, the video that we're going to upload on YouTube. You can always ask your question there or come to a dialogue full community on Facebook or Facebook group and ask your question and we'll be pleased to answer all of your questions. Yeah. So back on track with back all agents and yeah. uh, he's going to show us how to set up uh, the dialogue full client. And, and a quick side here. note on that, um, Carl, is that you were talking about that like a restaurant uh, agent, like, one may have delivery, one may not, or one may be Italian, one may be pizza. So with the client, what I've done is that I've, I've made it so that you can uh, – agent, agents are accessed by uh, keys. So when you create an agent, Google will give you a client key that you use that key, and it knows, it knows to use that agent. So in ChatFuel, if I wanted to have a delivery agent or a table booking agent, I can yep. create that, and then I can use that – separately. So the client has got it so that I could use multiple keys. So if I want to set up booking for multiple restaurants, I could use that booking, you know, table booking agent. And then I could use another agent for the pizzeria. So for pizza ordering, or I could use an agent for, um, you know, uh, the, the, you know, regular, regular other restaurants. So it, this will, the client will allow you to actually bounce around in different agents. So that way you don't have to recreate those, the same agents all the time. So just, that, that, that's a little more complex, but it, 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 it's, it's available in the client. <laughs> well, that's a really good user case of how each of these platforms are great. But when you start to use the best of both, then you get a really great bot instead of adding Chatfield's Resi 
user friendly. Most people can <clears throat> probably build a bot within an hour just learning how to do stuff with chat field with blocks and everything. Uh, same goes for Dialogflow if you want to have a little fun agent that's going to answer some uh, puzzle or trivia answer and questions and everything. But when you mingle both of them together and you start uh, leveraging the power of both, then you have a really great experience that you can leverage for your users or if you're an agency to build bot for real estate, restaurant business, or any type of, of uh, business that uh, you have client in. If you start to build within these two platforms together, then you're going to get some magics going on. Yeah. All right, so let's let's jump in, and, and so we're gonna we're just basically gonna just dive in, and we're gonna create the agent. Then we're going to um, uh, basically hook it up in the PHP. We'll upload the file, and then we'll show you how to do like the the chat fuel integration. So, um, what I what you can do, and when you're in Dialogflow, you'll you'll have a uh, you, you would want to come down here and basically in your left menu uh, say create a new agent. And so, basically, what I, I call, I'll call this test agent. And I'll just pick my, I'm in central time. And then that's it. You just say create and your, your agent's created. Now when it's, when it says it's working and it's done, um, takes a second for Google to, to build your agent and come on Google. There we go. So now that it's done, you see that it bounces over to the intents. And so when you create the agent, it actually creates a fallback intent, which is like if, if somebody, the bot doesn't understand what you're saying, it will answer with any one of these random things. Um, so that's, you, that's perfect for, for just testing right now. Yeah. So now that we've created the agent, we have to get our, uh, our key that lets us access the agent. So if you come over here again, you select your test agent, um, and then you hit the gear and that will open up this, the settings screen here. So all you need to do to be able to set this up is you'll scroll down, you'll see this client access token is you'll basically click the copy to the keyboard or, or to the clipboard and you'll copy that key. And then what you want to do is you want to open up, um, in, uh, Sublime text, you'll open up the dialogue flow PHP file, which is this is the client that I've written. And you'll see in um, in Sublime text, it, it does some pretty good um, syntax highlighting and stuff like that. All this is comments and a little bit of documentation. And um, but basically to get this whole thing up and running, the only thing you need to edit is this line here where it says client access token. And you can see that it says your client access token here. You basically highlight that text and you paste in that key that we just got and then you save it. And so once it's saved, you're, you're basically done. All you have to do is upload it to your server. Um, so let me switch over back to uh, just, just one second. Uh, sure. I'll, for the people who are not familiar with sublime uh, in the, the, um, in the section of the YouTube video under the, before the comments, we're going to, uh, put some resources where you can get uh, either Sublime, uh, Note++, plus plus, or you can use your Notepad. I would not personally use Notepad for the following reason, because if you use Notepad and there is a mistake, you just, you know, you just uh, type something which is not at the correct place, then the whole file could not work. So if you use Sublime, which is free, or Notepad++, plus plus, which is free too, if you, you know, sort of a, do a mistake and add a, a dot or something somewhere, it's going to show you that there is a problem at least. And then you can restart with, you know, copy and paste the, uh, or download again the client and just change uh, the, uh, the key as all showed it. So we're going to have in the resources uh, Sublime or you can use Notepad and there are a bunch of other uh, client like this in which you can access to uh, the client. You don't need to do anything other than to change the client key, but you will need to have at least Sublime or Note Plus Plus or Notepad to open and just copy paste the uh, the uh, the key that was just shown. Yep. So yeah, and and it, the, all those resources are in the documentation as well. Yep. So uh, once once you have the PHP file edited, you have to upload it to a server. So um, really, and a lot of people are, you know, have asked and I've seen in chat field groups, you know, asking about hosting and where can I get free hosting and why do I need hosting, yeah. that sort of thing. Um, if you're gonna if you're gonna be building bots, 
you need to have, a, you, well, you should have a website, so you should have hosting. Yeah. Um, and, and you can get, I mean, you can get hosting for $9. I've seen a couple of people that are a couple of, of services that actually have free hosting. I don't know how good they are. Uh, they're probably very rare, but I mean, for, for less than $10 a month, you can get HostGator or GoDaddy or any kind of shared hosting. It doesn't have to be your own, you know, virtual server and all that. I, I have a, a managed VPS. It's, it's, uh, quite a bit more expensive, but I get a lot more, uh, 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 flexibility and power to do what I want on my own system. But for, for really all you need is, is you just need a uh, shared hosting. And this is basically exactly. um, kind of what, uh, what, what it looks like here. Once you go to your C panel and that's going to be included in your hosting package. So um, that's kind of outside the scope of the tutorial, learning how to use C panel, but really here's what you do. You go to your file manager and C panel and I'm going to go to the, the uh, public HTML folder I can click upload and then I'm going to drag the dialog flow file over to it and that's it. It's online. It's, it's done. So I can go back there and if I go to um, brain trust interactive dot active dot com dialog flow dot PHP, you'll see there it is. So that's actually accessing the file, but since there's no input, it's not going to actually output any data. Um, that's it. It's, it's online. <laughs> you can now actually call chat fuel with it. Um, and actually what I can show you is you can test it without using chat fuel. You can type in um, query string equals uh, hello. Hello world. Hello Carl. Hello Carl. <laughs> and so there you go. And so there you see that it's, it, it didn't understand the input and it just responded with say that again. So if we come back over here, um, to the fallback intent, you'll see that, um, oh gosh, where, there it is. There's the phrase, say that again. So if I refresh this, it will respond with another random phrasing. I missed that. Can you say it again? So that's basically, that's it. It's under 10 minutes, Carl, <laughs> like less than five minutes. It's online. So, um, and if you go back here to, uh, training, you can actually see in dialog flow that I actually posted hello, Carl twice from the script. So that's, I mean, that, that's how you get the, the, the client online. And so what I would do is to get this into chat fuel, there's just a couple, you know, a couple small steps. So you can, um, you can use, you can use, uh, uh, <laughs> we keep dropping you, but that's right. Um, you can use uh, the dialogue flow call in, in chat fuel in any place inside the bot where you would have input, not just the default answer. Um, but a lot of times the, the, uh, the default answer is basically where chat fuel goes if it can't understand something. So if, if, if I say something that's not in the AI rules, or, you know, something weird happens, it will bounce to the default answer. So then you can send that, that information to Dialogflow. So um, I've created a very basic test bot in ChatFuel. I mean, you can go into the dashboard to create a bot. And what you would do is that you'd come over to the default answer. I've cleared it out. There's nothing there right now. So if I actually test this chat bot and I go to the messenger here, it's a, it, you can test it on chat fuel without having it uh, connected to a page and just says, this is the dialogue flow test bot. So if I say, Hey, what's up? Nothing's going to happen because the default answer is empty. So let's fix that. So what you would do is that I would go over here. I would set up a user input. Uh, you don't put any message to the user. You just want to silently get the input. And what I can do is I can call, uh, save it to a, uh, a user attribute called query string. That's it. And um, you, you can, you, you, this is an option. You can add it yep. and typing mm -hmm. if you want. I don't like to do it because I like to process things silently and bounce around the different blocks. But we'll just do this for uh, just kind of the quick example. And then the next step is you create a JSON API. That's it. Um, I like to use post. Um, it's, it's just a little more secure. Yep. Um, so you basically paste in the, the link, your URL to where you uploaded the dialogue flow PHP file. And then 
um, what I like to do is I like to pass in the messenger user ID. What the messenger user ID is, is for everybody that accesses your bot, they have their own unique ID. So Carl, maybe one, two, three, four, five, and if I access the bot, then I'm six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, and so what this does is it helps the otherwise, bot. Otherwise, it's gonna be, otherwise, the same person would connect once or twice or three times, and wow. it would identify it as three users instead of one, eh? correct? Right, yeah, this, this, this helps maintain your session. So if every time I hit Dialogflow, I say, user is accessing dialog flow with the, with this session and a session is basically it's like if you you know it, it's basically your ex, your your current experience inside the bot so if i'm bouncing around in the bot and then i leave i just i i started my session and then i ended my session so the messenger user id will will maintain your session and that that's very important for maintaining context and and the more complex things with that you do with dialog flow yeah. so then the only the only other thing I have to pass is a query string that I just entered in, and then it's done. Um, and then your your bot is then connected to Dialogflow. So if I come back to the the bot here, and I say, um, "Hey, how's it going?" Then it's going to answer, and you see it's typing, and it says, "I missed that." So now your bot just actually connected. What happened is that it didn't understand what I was saying because I don't have any AI rules. And so it went to the default answer and what I, it took what I typed in as query string and it sent it to dialogue flow and then dialogue flow answered. And if I re respond or uh, refresh the training, you'll see that it, it took that request in there and it didn't know there was nothing matched. And so it used the default fallback and answered with one of those, uh, random questions or one of those random texts. If uh, people you don't see uh, the um, within your uh, training uh, section in Dialogflow, sometimes it, it may take up to uh, 10 minutes to show there. So if you test it and you don't see the ALO or I miss that or anything like this, uh, don't be worried uh, and just go back 10, 10 minutes after that and you're going to see it. Sometimes there's a bit of delay in uh, getting that response back to the training, training uh, part of Dialogflow. Yep. So that's that's as that's as, as simple as you can get, um, and then of course the the whole idea is that with uh, passing information to dialog flow, I may want to answer something, uh, or, you know, answer uh, with another prompt or another uh, another chunk of text. But I also want to be able to set user attributes in chat field, and I think you cover that in a lot of your your tutorials. But let's say I I, I do tell I want to order a pizza. And Chatfuel could answer, uh, basically set the uh, the user attributes for, you know, uh, order type is equal to pizza, and it could send it back to Chatfuel as a user attribute that I could use. So, can, can, can you make an, uh, an example of that? Because there's a yeah. lot of people asking for that. So, yeah, for them and to, there's oh, um, just a simple one. <laughs> yeah, and so if I if all I want to do, and let me copy some text here and do it. Uh, here we go. Like this, and so the the really the 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 most minimal thing that you want to do in chat field or in dialog flow to set user attributes is that you would come over here to your intent. I'll just use the fallback intent again because that's we don't have anything else set up. Um, you can leave text responses if you want to. What will happen with my client? is that if you have a text response and you have, you know, it, well, depending on however many responses, you could have multiple text responses and multiple payloads, it will just combine them all. And so that will output all that to chat fuel. So yeah, you can delete that just for the example. We're gonna right. have like this one, it's gonna be simple. Yeah, so what I would do um, is to, to be able to set a user attribute, I could set a custom payload and this takes JSON and um, we'll put a link in there for the chat fuel JSON uh, documentation. It's pretty simple stuff. Um, really, if all you're going to do is set up a user attribute, um, I've actually got that in, in the uh, the Dialogflow PHP and also in the manual. There's a quick, just a quick example. I mean, you're not going to be creating gallery cards and all kinds of, of interactions because that chat fuel can handle that honestly yep. better than Dialogflow. Exactly. Can. So, um, let's say I want to say, um, oh, I don't know, like order type or uh, let's see, order item, and we'll call it uh, 
like order item. And uh, right, you could copy paste the, the same line uh, in order to have two attributes so that people know that if you want more than one, you can basically just copy paste the first, the, the line three and put a comma and then do another one and there's gonna be two attributes instead of one, right? Yeah, and so if I wanted to add more attributes, I could say, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, uh, delivery location. You yep. can create as many attributes as you need to for that particular, you know, basically based on what you want to do with it, you can do that. So we're gonna just um, call this order item like that, or we're gonna we're basically gonna pass back pass back like a what you ordered. So to do that, I need to create an entity. So um, you come up here once you create your your custom payload, you would save. And then what I need to do is come up here and create an entity. And you can probably explain entities a little better than I can, Carl. Yeah, an entity is like um, the, the best example for entities would be uh, to use, again, the same uh, restaurant uh, user case. Uh, so for uh, a pizza restaurant, for the pizza entities would be the crust. Is it a thin crust or is it a traditional crust or a thick crust? The type of cheese, mozzarella, cheddar, uh, uh, Monterey Jack, uh, type of sauce, tomato, tomato sauce, or Alfredo, or barbecue sauce. So, in fact, entity is the backbone of your agent. So, I always start building the entities before the intent, because there is one thing that you need to remember. Once you create it, and once you use the, uh, the entities in your intent, if you try to change it, it might be a bit tricky. So always start by doing the entities first and then building up the intents. Mm -hmm. So for this one, is, uh, I was going to do a simple order items, mm -hmm. which is going to be used in the intent. But you can do many more. And I'm going to do a, a tutorial on all the type of entities that you can do. But for yeah. just the sake of this example, we're going to make a pretty simple one. So we're just going to, yeah, quick example. So I'll call it order item, and let's say we're doing a pizzeria. So I'll say pizza, and then I need to enter a synonym, and, or synonym, which is pizza. Or I could say, like, some people call it a pie. Like in New York, yeah. they want to order a pie. So I call it a pie. Uh, hopefully we're not, you know, the pizza doesn't sell, the pizza shop doesn't sell pies. But <laughs> so I can say pizza, pizza pie, I could say, and enter in, like, pizza pie. And so if I typed in, I want to order a pie, it would know that I'm talking about a pizza. Or if I say I want to order a pizza pie. So that's basically different ways that you can say pizza is what that is. So I save that, uh, that entity. And if I go to my intent, let's say when I, I'm going to go back here and edit this a little bit. Because once I set this, I want to redirect to a block as well. So And so I can tell people what I ordered. So this is the most simple um, the most simple uh, uh, JSON, you know, setting an attribute and redirecting to a block. And that's kind of what you want to do when you're doing uh, dealing with chat flows. You just basically want to set attributes and go to a block and then let the block handle the input and, and, and the, the content. So I'll go back to chat view here real quick and I'll create this block um, and I'll create a group and I will create a block and I'll call it what you ordered. And I'll say, um, First name, looks like you ordered a, and I'll call it order item as, as the attribute. And so when it bounces to this block, it will actually give me the value that's in here. So uh, this is how we're tying, uh, tying dialogue flow to the chat field. So, if I come to um, the, entity, or the, the intent here, what I want to do is I want to actually tag that entity I created to, um, uh, to a sentence, like a training sentence, right? Yep. So let's see, where do I create the trainings? Is there no, is there no training? Um, uh, it should be uh, above. Oh, this is, this is. What, no, uh, it's uh, responses. Uh, just go under action. Yeah, right there. Mm -hmm. well, um, no, no, uh, no, no, no. Go up. It's supposed to be above. Cut oh, this is default fallback. Uh, yeah, that's right. Just create another intent and uh, you're going to be fine. Okay, so I'll, I'll create an, a new intent. Let me, let me copy, copy this, that. delete <laughs> that. Sorry about that. So I'll save this.
And, and so we'll create, we'll basically create a new intent. And um, let me see, create an intent and I'll call it um, ordering. And we'll save the intent. And then I want to come down to training phrases and say, I'd like to order a pizza. And if I hit enter, then um, see it, it, since I already added a, um, a, a, an entity for order item and I gave it an, uh, the example of pizza, Dialogflow already knows that that is pizza. So for, uh, for, for people watching the video, if we made the entity uh, a bit more complex, we could, add, uh, we could have add to the same intent burgers or pasta. And if the user, the first time type, uh, I've ordered pizza, the second time is going to, a second user is going to say, I want to order burger. Since uh, Dialogflow is pretty smart, it, it's going to understand that pasta or burger is the same entity than pizza and he's going to be able to parse back the attribute the same way at it's going to be doing right here with this example. Mm -hmm. So here in the intent then what I would need to do is I need to add my response back in. Um, I will create a custom payload. I'll paste what I did before. So it will pass in order item and what you ordered. Now it shouldn't have a like a the dollar sign for a value there, Carl? Yep, it should have. Uh, it should be in the action and parameters. So just go uh, open that up uh, and just save your intent. Uh, and then there we go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, so basically what happens if I type in, I'd like to order a pizza, it knows that this is an order item or an item on, men, on my menu, yep. and it will actually save this value to this, to, to this dollar sign order item then I can actually pass that back to chat fuel. So that's what's happening is I type, I type into chat fuel, chat fuel sends it to dialogue flow because it doesn't know what I'm talking about. Dialogue flow makes sense of it and says, okay, chat fuel, he ordered a pizza. And then we will see how this works. So we're more or less set up. That's, I don't think we need any more explanation than that, right? No, uh, that's perfect. The only other thing, uh, with <clears throat> that example that we could make is to have a prompt. So if the user would say, I want to order without mm -hmm. saying pizza or burger or uh, pasta, uh, then we could have a prompt box that could say, yeah, you want to order, but uh, what do you want to order? Do you want to order pizza, burger, or pasta? And then as soon as the user answer pizza, then uh, it would switch and the chat field would catch on and say, okay, now you want to order pizza, then uh, Chatfield will, will take the relay and uh, finish uh, the intent uh, with the blocks that uh, being redirected from Dialogflow to Chatfield. Yeah. And what I did here while Carl was talking is I added a couple more training phrases because yep. not, not everybody will say, I'd like to order a pizza. So somebody will just say, give me a pizza. And so, and I could type that in, give me a pizza. And so if we, if we add more training phrases to, uh, and this basically is just variations on how people talk. So, exactly. um, and so dialogue flow, the more training that you give dialogue flow, the better it will understand and the more uh, matches you'll have. So once I've added these, I'll save, then I can come back into chat fuel again and I can um, test this and say, I want a pizza and let's see what happens. Hopefully I did this right. Oh, it, it went to the fallback. <laughs> <laughs> Just for uh, the, 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 the training phrases, you know that um, for Instagram, uh, uh, the ideal number of uh, hashtag is approximately 11 to, to 15. For the training phrases, we have the same type of correlation. Uh, you usually would need to do at least 10 type of variation so that it would always sort of a uh, catch on what you're saying. And if you have friends that, well, your friends may ask the question in the way that you would not personally ask. So when you're building that, don't hesitate to ask your friends to say, well, I'm building this. And, uh, you know, how would you say that question in your own words? And then you can add it up. It's going to make it more uh, natural for your bot to understand a lot of people 
speaking differently and asking the, the, the staff differently. Yeah. I think, well, once, once we, once we've created the training phrase, don't we need to go into, into the training and then assign it to an intent? You could do that or okay. you, you could test it in chat fuel. And then if it's not working, then we would go in the training section and then uh, it may have a delay. So right now it's yeah, not, it looks like it's got a delay. Yeah. So it's a delay that you would just reassign the uh, intent to the correct uh, one. Here we only have one, so we would just need to do that. But we'll make another video. So I'll make another video just for the training part. So okay. just don't focus on it. And here All we right. have the priority of the uh, the entities, which can be used, but I don't like it that much right now. <laughs> yeah. So uh, one one other thing I can do is I could I could give it more priority over like nor all, all the intents that you create have a normal priority, so they'll be accessed in the order in which they're they're set. So if I come in here to my intents. Um, let me save this and I come over to intense. You'll see it says default fallback, default welcome, and then ordering is, is so it's, it, it will, it will hit each one of these in order. So if something doesn't match, it will always go to the fallback intent. I could turn off the, the fallback. Um, but what I'm doing is I'm actually going into the ordering intent and I come up here to the priority and I'm setting it. Let's say I set it to the highest priority. So that allows yep. me that, that should take priority. It should access that first to see if there's a match and then go to the fallback. Um, so let's, let's just try it again, I guess. So let me go over here to messenger and say, I want a pizza. Will it work? Looks like you want a pizza. <laughs> there we go. So it, what it did is it passed that data back. Um, so if we look here in chat field and I have a misspelling here, looks like you ordered a pizza and Remember when I said that it leveraged the, the best part of uh, both Dialogflow and ChatFuel? Mm -hmm. Well, Dialogflow <clears throat> analytics are not that good, but with parsing that attribute from Dialogflow to ChatFuel, then you can leverage uh, ChatFuel great you know, power with broadcasts and everything. And you can use that data that you picked from Dialogflow to ChatFuel and do whatever you want. You want to do a broadcast with that information two days from now and just say, hey, I've noticed that you're interested in your pizza. Do you want to have like this or that? Or here's a video or something like this. So this is what we mean by leveraging both, the both of best world, in fact, the best stuff about Dialogflow and the best stuff about ChatFuel mm -hmm. with what we just showed you is exactly how we can do this. Yep. So there we go. That's that's the that's the simplest implementation we have <laughs> of, of doing anything uh, with dialogue flow and chat fuel. But um, you'll see how how basically easy it was to get the client up and running. You've got your own client. Um, as far as um, let me let me go in here and do a quick um, share of the dialogue flow again here and show you kind of some of the um, some of the more advanced. Um, options that we have. So once, once you're comfortable with that, um, what you can do with the client is that, um, you know, if, if you have the client uploaded with one key, then that one, then basically that client will access that one agent only. Uh, yep. So what you can do in chat fuel is that you can actually, uh, it, it gives you options to pass in uh, all of these, all of these uh, variables or user attributes from ChatFuel. So, um, if I want to use multiple agents with the same client, I could actually go back and create, uh, pass the token from ChatFuel. So, um, you know, if I if I just create, let's say in ChatFuel, I go into the user attributes and I create DF token is equal to, you know, and, and I set the value equal to this. Then I could pass that from chat fuel to the to the uh, to the client, and it will override this, and it will use whatever agent I tell it to use. Uh, uh, I'll alternate uh, as an uh, an alternative. You could have uh, your dialogflow.php and have multiple one with uh, you. You would just need to name them differently, and have different access keys. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. So that yeah. So be you can you can use the same client with different access keys. Um, and then I can, you can also pass in context. I think that's a little bit of, uh, outside this tutorial, but yeah. context, um, is, is, uh, kind of like a, a good example. Let's say if, um, oh, I don't know, 
I don't know, Carl, good, good example. I, I give you one, 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 uh, with the restaurant usage would be, you know how human beings are, they always change their mind. So one thing about contact is that you could be ordering pizza with, let's say one, uh, French fries, but then just right after that, the human being would go at a restaurant and say, Oh, wait, wait, I'm going to change my, uh, small fry by a Caesar salad. So, what context is, is that within a conversation, the first intent was ordering and the second one was modifying your order. So yeah. they would keep the same intent and say, okay, uh, I received order A and now the user A want to modify order A and say order A.1. So that's simply staying from one intent to another. Look context like a chain. You know, the blockchain, people talk about the blockchain, whereas there's two moving part going from one chain of the block to the other chain of the block. Well, context is exactly like this. This is one intent. This is the second intent. And if there would be a third one, it's a chain of intent uh, within the same user case for a restaurant would be ordering, then modifying the order, receiving the order, and then having, maybe you could perhaps at the end of this chain of intent say, I had a great service for my order from server name, let's say Lisa, and then you would have a chain of intent. It's allow the bot to remember the conversation. Yeah, it, it allows you to maintain state, I guess. Yeah, exactly. So, um, so you can pass context from the bot as well. Um, this, this event um, in Dialogflow, if you want to trigger something, uh, trigger a, a, an intent without actually that without the user actually putting in any input, I could actually call an event. So if I, if I give the, um, the order items uh, intent and I say the event is order, I could just pass the event name order. So I don't even have to enter anything. I just click a button and, and then Dialogflow could create a default order for me. So I don't even have to have user input. Um, we have already covered the, passing the messenger user ID that allows you to maintain your, your session when you're passing in context. Um, I also have a thing here, uh, reset context. So if you've, if you've got context going, you can, uh, in, in dialogue flow, you can create context with a, with what they call a lifespan. So if I say I'm ordering, I can tell dialogue flow that the next five posts have yep. the, have the context of ordering. So here I could actually reset that and say, okay, clear that out. Don't use that context anymore. And so um, the lifespan, again, that would be how many posts that, uh, that, that dialogue flow takes to maintain that, you know, that, that keep that context. It defaults to one. Um, if you are having some weird issues with dialogue flow, you can also pass in a debug flag as well. So if I set that to true or one, then what happens is that uh, anything that comes into the dialogue flow client, uh, anything that gets posted, the dialogue flow and the results all get written to text files so that you can see what's going on. So if let's say in your, your dialogue flow custom payload, you, you have an error. And so chat field keeps saying JSON error, JSON error, and you don't know what's going on. You'll be able to download, you can turn on the debug flag, download it, and then you'll be able to see what the error is in your, in your, your response. So if there's, a comma out of place or something like that, you'll be able to check and see that, oh, okay, that, you know, kind of lets you know what's going on. Um, the client also supports any language, uh, any language that Dialogflow supports. So I could, I could use this client for English, and then let's say if I have somebody in the bot come in the bot that speaks Spanish, they could say, you know, uh, uh, the bot could say, habla inglés, habla espanol. If I click the habla, habla, and, uh, habla espanol button, Chatfuel could switch that flag to, uh, to uh, Spanish yep. and pass the content to Dialogflow, and then Dialogflow could answer in Spanish. So I can swap out languages. So this is a good way to um, localize your, your bot. So uh, like for an example, we've, we've got some real estate agents in Southern California. So there's a, a lot of Hispanics. Uh, and, and, you know, a lot of bilinguals, a lot of people, English and Spanish. So they come into the bot and they start speaking Spanish. The bot may not know what is going on. Uh, the agent will take over. The real estate agent will take over from there. And, um, and so what, you know, but 
we could have the bot answer in Spanish as well or, or whatever language you like. So you can dynamically change your language input into Dialogflow. Uh, we also support, uh, you know, if, you, if somebody wants to uh, pass in uh, their location from the chat fuel location button, it'll also pass in latitude and longitude. So uh, Dialogflow will take that as well. So those are all the more um, advanced flags and, and variables that you can send in. Um, the, the, the manual has examples for everything, you know, for all of that. And, and it has a good uh, description of, of everything it passes in. But um, most people will not need to use, I'd say the majority of those flags. They're just, they're there because Dialogflow supports it. <laughs> that's great. Hey, uh, that's, a wonderful um, tutorial in order. To, I think that people are going to be pleased and I think that they're going to be able to be just fine. But if they have questions, uh, they can always come back to us. We're going to be pleased to answer all your questions. Again, maybe you can um, remind about your uh, awesome uh, donation that you're doing for the Exodus Road. I'm going to do my donation this week. Uh, so if you guys want to use this, I think, this is only a small uh, gesture in order to, uh, I'm not doing any money with it. Uh, I'm just doing this uh, video and this tutorial with all. I'm pleased to do that. I have the chance to do it. And if you want to use a client, well, just leave a couple dollars uh, for this uh, awesome uh, group, which is called Exodus Road. And if you have any question that either I can answer or all can answer about the the dialogue for plan will be pleased to answer all of your questions. So thanks for your time and to showing you us uh, this client uh, all, yeah. and we can uh, <laughs> we'll be waiting for you guys to uh, bombard us with your question. But I think that uh, if you listen this video, in fact, I think we're going to make it in part one and part two. Yep. Uh, after a bit of editing, but I think you're going to be fine. And it's uh, it's been an honor for me to have the time to discuss with you all. Yeah, man. Yeah. Appreciate it. I love, love talking to you. And um, yeah. Again, if, if, um, if you would like to get the client, uh, basically all you have to do is go to uh, the exodus and um, I'm asking that you donate at least $35. It's, that's not much. Uh, if you can donate less, I don't, I don't care as long as you donate. And um, then you uh, send uh, the, your receipt, just forward your receipt uh, to info at braintrustinteractive.com. And then, I'll send you the files. Perfect. That's it. So, thanks for your time, Al. And uh, uh, for you guys watching the video, well, um, there is a certain part like context and everything. Don't worry, we're going to address that in another video. Otherwise, it would take too much time, uh, too much of all time to explain it in one single video and too much of my time to make example that you can all understand. So, thanks again. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Sounds good. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye.